Hello and welcome to the Launching Global Champions Tour here in Antwerp in Belgium and we're catching up with several of the Belgian riders throughout. Gregory Watelet is one of our riders here this week. Gregory, last year here was a very good run for you. Yeah, last year uh, I had a good show, I had a win um, in one 145 class. Uh, I was a bit more unlucky in the Grand Prix. I hope it's going to be better this year for that. And from your point of view, competing here in Belgium on home grounds, extra pressure? Uh, for sure, it's always nice to jump at home in our countries. Uh, I will not say it's more pressure because anyway we are used to it and we li like me, I like it. <laughs> uh, but we always want to do a bit better when it's at home, for sure. You mentioned there you like the pressure. I mean, does the big occasion help you with competition? Um, I, I'm quite lucky I don't have so much stress so I support quite with the pressure and I don't know at the end if it's helped me but for sure it doesn't change so much for me. And in terms of being able to deal with that, do you have a secret that keeps you laid back under pressure or not? No, I think it's a little bit how I am, um, a quiet person and yeah, I don't, I don't know where it comes from, it's quite easy for me. And Gregory, you've been behind some really big names for horses in the equestrian world, like Lantinus, like several others. Tell us a little bit about some of them that you've produced. Yeah, that's true that I had a few good ones before and yeah, it's difficult to find out uh, what, who was the best one, but for sure Cortez was something special. He left a little bit too early for me. I could not really use him uh, so much in the big classes. But the good thing is that he went to uh, one of the best riders in the world and he could do the, or he can do the career that he is doing now. Um, and Lantinis was also was really good horse, all the scope and feel like he could jump everything. He, and with him, I had him until he was middle of nine years old and I could do a few Grand Prix already and he won a lot. He won already like four or five Grand Prix in the same years. And then um, I had a for sure last year fall up, was also for me an amazing horse, really careful, clever. Um, okay, also left a little bit too early from, from my <laughs> point of view. But okay, at the end uh, it's uh, for sure there was a few good ones that I had uh, maybe a shorter times. And uh, yeah, I have to be lucky in a way that I rode them for even if it was for a short period. And in mentioning some of those horses' names, of course, Cortez that then went on for the, the World Equestrian Games. But now you also have some very, very good horses with some very good owners. Yeah, of course. I, I have Conrad now. That's my first horse. And uh, he did the World Championship last year. And uh, I think this year is also more ready because everything came quite quick. Quite quick for him last year with uh, Aken, with uh, Kao, and he started the World Cup during the winter. But now he's more mature. I gave him a little bit rest uh, in March, and I started in last uh, week at the show in Lumen, and he's going to do a few Nations Cups now, and then after a few global tours. Um, and I have behind him a few other ones, uh, nice also like Egano, like Odeol, or like uh, Eldorado, like uh, Riesling, it's a few nice uh, competitive horses. And uh, for sure, I think I have a good group of seven and eight years old coming. Okay, that one I need to wait a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I, I still doing the same like I did before and building, building horses that when these one who I have now are gonna be sold, uh, injured or something that I have always something behind. I have also a really nice uh, nine years old Corridus and uh, I think it's also maybe uh, one of the best welcome uh, for the future in my stable. And in terms of you mentioned they're producing young horses you've done it so well again and again. Do you have a secret? Do you have a special method for producing young horses? Not really. I think I take times. Um, I, I always try to l listen to the horse and wait and take uh, the time I need. I never try to go, okay, sometimes I had to, but I never try to jump bigger or faster or use the boots too quick behind or use, yeah, do what they are not ready to do. That's, I think, one of the good things and it's also why at the end when they get sold or when they left my place they still have to they still can improve and they still going good and then then yeah that's also um, a good thing for me and um, 
but the, the idea, you know, it's I try to find really good young, good young ones, that's for sure. That's anyway what we have to do. We have no choice. And if normal horses, with normal horses, we can not do anything for the top sport. And then I have always nice owner around me, um, nice breeder, or, and I think with the time it's more and more coming. And yeah, I'm trying to build something also really with confidence uh, with the owners and breeders. And I think it's also why everything coming in that way that I always can get nice young ones and I can build them and take times and then, yeah, bring them to the top spot. Well, you've got a great record and, and you come in and win a lot from that point of view. I mean, Conrad, you mentioned in there as, as one of your winning horses. I mean, what what do you, what's your your plan usually and when, when you've got to that stage? Do you, are you a real chaser of the clock or as you say, you, you take your time with all of your horses? You mean when they are ready? Yeah. Uh, when, like Conrad, no, it's a little bit different because he's 10 and it's maybe one of the first time I could keep one a little bit longer. Uh, even if he's still young. Um, then this year, for sure, I hope he's going to do some good things. i going to plan and I always anyway plan to do not too much uh, like now I did uh, two, three three four big shows beginning of the years and I did a bit more quiet even if at the end I also would like to ride him here to ride him uh, in Miami and everything but I have to choose and I, I cannot go everywhere and then uh, I think first thing for me it's always the, the welfare of the horse and the sound and when everything is fine and they can do a little bit more and then at the end I think you get more results for a long term in that way and I think it's all I did and so far it was quite good. It's done very well so far from that point of view. Who are the riders that you watch? I mean, we talk about producers of horses but from your production yourself as a rider, who, is the, who are the people that have influenced you? You mean like can produce good horses? Or? Who are the ones that you come and watch? Who are the ones that, that, that inspire you? Oh, there is so many good riders. It's really difficult to say uh, one uh, because when you come here, the show they are all good in a way. And but for sure, I have a lot of respect for, and I was like quite fan from John Whitaker for a long time, for many years. And now, for sure, if I come and watch, I like Rolf. I also train a bit with him, and uh, I like his system, his way of thinking, and uh, personality also. For sure, one of my best friends, Steve. I think everybody can also say that he has a, one of the best system, and he takes time with the horses and he build them also for a long term, and it's something that I really like. But I can't say many riders because also Luc Der, also yeah, it's yeah. many I can, can say. Well, there's a host in there, and you're very much up with them and, and doing fantastic well. Good luck for the rest of the season, Gregory, and uh, hopefully another success here in Antwerp. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Well, we're joining many more riders throughout the week here in Antwerp for the launching Global Champions Tour, Leg 2.